If you're spending, I don't know, 30000 or more dollars a year on a person that's an inmate, we know that by the time a child um, gets into third or fourth grade, if they have not begun to be successful in passing and successfully passing that grade, that there are already plans to build prisons to accommodate children. Mid-South Viewpoint, a Christian news and information feature of Bot Radio Network 640 AM, discussing the news, views, issues, and concerns that affect our community. Join us now for today's edition of Mid-South Viewpoint. We have a lot of moms who have little babies. And we have some moms who have children that are three years old, but their um, their brains are very fragile. And we want to talk about how important it is to protect your baby's brain. Because there's a lot of things that they have to learn in life. They have to go to school. And the influence we have with the baby at a smaller age it helps them as they get older to um, make sure they don't shake the baby. They don't um, sleep with the baby because you can um, have an accident and roll over the baby. Yes. And it's very important that we talk to these moms when they're pregnant because a lot of things happen while they're carrying a the child. We want to make sure they eat healthy, they don't smoke or drink or do anything that's going to cause harm to the baby. And so um, it's very dear to me because I had a preemie. And I know how important it is to take care of that baby and how important it is to protect that child because you want the child to grow up and be healthy and strong. And it's best to start at a younger age, at, um, at um, the time you're pregnant. We have a after-school program that talks about, has Bible studies that are designed for the kids that talk about the family as a whole. And as a child, what role you have as a child and the responsibilities you have to do to be, um, the responsibilities that you have with the child as being the child in that family as well. And um, it also, we make sure that the men that are at the center that are positive roles for those kids can be mentors to them as well as making sure they are living the lifestyle that they should see, um, what they should grow up to be young men to make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to be as um, a responsible person, to make sure that they are heading in the right direction, to make sure that they're um, being obedient and making sure that they're going to school and getting the lesson they're supposed to learn, you know, to learn the information so that when they get older, they will have somebody, if there's not a, a positive role model at home, that they will see those things as they come to the Neighborhood Christian Center and to see, okay, I can do this. I can grow up and do this, and I can do it. Even though this is happening, I can still make my mark in life, and I can do that. It was nothing that we looked at um, before we um, began to design Operation Smart Child. Matter of fact, it was called the Early Childhood Program first, and then we all got together between Urban Child Institute and Neighborhood Christian Centers, a community-based um, piece or component, and then a science component. We put those two together and began to explore what we call the top 10 brain development tasks, uh, parent tasks. And so as, as we continue to develop and, and see... Um, how we could begin to disseminate this information into the community, we began to uh, see that we needed to make it a more simple message, uh, easier to digest, not just for the community we were serving, for just anybody, because yeah. it was quite above many of our heads. So over time, we began to develop what we now call Operation Smart Child. So it took us three years to get to this point. Yeah. In that process, we began to notice the model of Harlem children, Harlem's Children's Zone with Jeffrey Canada. So the closest I could say that we would have a model to, to look at would be Harlem's Children's Zone. We have our staff meetings every, every other week. And one of the things we talked about and emphasized, and we do emphasize in our ministry, is education, service, and evangelism, not in that order, but those three things. And so anybody you're serving, whether it's your own children or you're serving other people to help them to be, to, uh, be better citizens um, and be prepared for life and eternal life, you need to be focused on those things, serving other people, evangelism, your own knowledge and, and connection with Christ, and helping others to know about him, and then education itself. And so those three components are most important in, in us creating and developing positive Positive community, strong community. We're encouraging people to live uh, uh, pure lives. We're encouraging people to live abstinent lives. Uh, we're encouraging people, if they do become pregnant, that they have that baby. Uh, you can't raise that baby that you uh, offer it for abortion, I mean, for, not for abortion, but for adoption, I'm sorry, and not to choose abortion. And so th those are things that we've always taught the people that come in, but not every person out of those 72,000 people are pregnant. Mm -hmm. And so in order to find those concentrated groups, we had to connect with people that are dealing with that, like Christ Community Health Services and Life Choices, um, and then um, a couple of couple of organizations that are life affirming, you know, um, ministries or services. And that is how we begin to uh, connect to 
to bring in the women that are living in these situations that we wanted to help to have a better start with their children. The economic impact um, in investing in people, um, it's common sense that if you're spending, I don't know, 30000 or more dollars a year on a person that's an inmate, we know that by the time a child um, gets into third or fourth grade, if they have not begun to be successful in passing and successfully passing that grade, that there are already plans to build prisons to accommodate children that have made, that will make worse choices over time because of not being able to read, uh, peer pressure all the different things that influence a child um, that, that, that has, they have great as, uh, aspirations, but because they have, don't have all the great the foundation they need. Uh, there are toxic relationships. There are people that uh, Renee and Linda are beginning to design uh, classes around uh, how do we keep our children safe in our homes. Uh, child Advocacy Center is one of the references that we use because people shy away from these issues, but we just had literally a, a, one of our pastors to tell us of a case where a mom, 25-year-old mother, good mother, made some, some wrong moves and, you know, and ended up in some situations she's in, but she, she wants a man, needs a man in her house. And that man did not know, she did not know his history as a predator. And so she has a man that she's wanting to be with that's living in the house is really not interested in her interest in those two children. Yeah. And so um, she went through a very um, hard time over the past few, few week, days because she thought she was going to lose her kids because of what he had done because she wasn't aware. And so this is what we teach in Operation Smart Child, awareness of things like this, toxic relationships, toxic situations, toxic community um, um, environments. You know, those are all things that contribute to our children's outcome and, and them having the best outcome. The way we reach out to these moms, um, we're going into the homes, doing home visits, uh, making sure everything is going okay with them. Uh, we've been, we did, we just did an OSC punch where we was reaching out to agencies, uh, trying to connect with uh, parents, caregivers, fathers, cousins, uncles, anybody that's caring for children age zero to four. I think that it has impact lives in, uh, in a way that uh, we're doing the TTRP, which is the Touch Talk Replay uh, modules, uh, it's been so impacted that these girls are actually taking these modules more than one time. I tell people all the time, the things that, that we're teaching are no different than most of us have done with our own children. Mm -hmm. um, if you had a pretty pretty okay background, if you have a decent job and you have a nice neighborhood you live in, you want the best for your children, you're going to talk to your children in more sentences than most because you're not as stressed. You're not wondering about if, I, if I'm going to eat today. So it's like, what am I going to eat today? So you have more time with your family. You have more the luxury of, of time. The people that we serve, it may seem as though they have the luxury of time, but they are stressed and they're always thinking about how am I going to accomplish and get this, this, and that because they are not adequate prepared for life and so relationship is most important because I always say Linda and Renee and another of their team members Joy which is one of our teachers they are almost like surrogate parents to these ladies and sometimes to the, the, the fathers and to the, the, the grandparents because some of the grandparents are younger than we are yeah, you know yeah. and so they have not been raised in an environment of, of relationship and love and so what they pour out to them that makes the difference, and they're willing to come and listen and learn because they're ready to learn. It's just a matter of trusting the people they're teaching. Thanks for listening to Mid-South Viewpoint. If you'd like to join the conversation, you can email us. Our address is wcrv at botradionetwork.com. This has been Mid-South Viewpoint, another Christian news and information feature from Bot Radio Network 640 AM.